age of enlightenment, people believed they could discard the old world. And that with human reason replacing tradition and faith, modern men could fashion something better. In the Age of Enlightenment, people believed they could discard the old world. And with human reason replacing tradition and faith, modern men believed they could fashion something better. The narrative of reason was used to launch the reign of terror, where at least 40,000 people were beheaded by guillotine. This obsession with bloodshed and destruction led to a century of attempted revolutions throughout Europe. Socialists launched uprisings in France in 1789, 1830, and 1848 before Napoleon III launched his own movement with a coup d'etat in December 1851 to end the chaos. After Napoleon assumed power, he placed a hard ban on movements such as the Cult of Reason, which had a key role in the violence and chaos of the French Revolution. And he also placed restrictions on organizations that the socialists were using to spread their movements, including unions and news outlets. However, in 1863, when Napoleon eased restrictions, French unions immediately sent envoys to join the first meeting of the Communist International in 1863. It was promoted by Karl Marx, who wrote the Communist Manifesto. This was followed by Marx's second international in 1867, along with his publication of Das Kapital and the staging of a new revolt in Paris by Marx's followers. The communist movement existed prior to Marx, but Marx gave it a new lease on life. Before Marx, communism and its system of socialism were in their death throes, as they weren't seen as practical systems. Austrian economist Ludwig von Mises wrote in Socialism that the ideologies weren't able to win academic debates in economics and sociology, and they weren't seen as functioning systems because of this. Marx countered this failing narrative battle by stating that economists and sociologists were of the bourgeois class and therefore didn't need to be debated. This gave socialists and communists the ability to ignore the debate altogether and instead result in name calling using class labels. What Marx also did was create a new vision of a communist future, of a society created in the image of man rather than God. Marx used a theory called the negation of the negation. The concept's from Hegelianism, one of the main metaphysical theories in Europe at the time. And it held that to realize a more evolved condition, the existing condition must first be destroyed. Using the promise of an undefined utopia, he justified destruction of all existing institutions, including morality, family, religion, economics, government, and others. The author and reformed revolutionary, Fyodor Dostoevsky, characterized the motivations for these movements in his book, Demons, stating that from the standpoint of communists, at the present time, all your efforts should be directed towards bringing the whole thing down, both the government and its morality. Only we will be left, we who have prepared ourselves to assume power. Under his movement, Marx united socialist and communist factions across Europe. They fomented destruction, first in France, and then the rest of the world. When Napoleon III again softened restrictions in France, socialist newspapers pushed the new slogan of moderation is death, according to The Terrible Year by Alistair Horne, which added, passion seemed to be mounting towards an explosion comparable to that of 1848. And explode these passions did with the creation of the Paris Commune of 1871. Groups that we've discussed before, the Jagobins and the Blanquists, seized Paris and launched a new terror that would in over two months between March 18th and May 28th in the same year, kill innocents, desecrate churches, and decimate a large portion of the art and architecture that Paris was known for. Previously, during the French Revolution's de-Christianization movement that lasted until 1794, Revolutionaries dressed farm animals in priest garb and placed prostitutes at the heads of churches. They desecrated cathedrals, destroyed crosses, and they killed priests. 
then into the Paris Commune of 1871, priests were again persecuted and temples were again destroyed. The Commune leaders issued a notice of the Church of St. Pierre with a slogan for their crimes. Priests are thieves and churches are haunts where the masses have been morally assassinated. What began as a movement to replace supposedly oppressive traditions quickly spiraled down to commune leaders acting out in the very same terrors that they claimed to oppose. They confiscated private property, they censored rival newspapers, and they arrested anyone suspected of sedition, and they moved to destroy all symbols of the old world. When it became evident that the reign was coming to a close, they lashed out at Paris with brazen acts of terror. The first cultural monument to fall victim was the 840-foot Verdome Column. When government forces moved in to stop them on May 23rd, the commune leaders set fire to as much of Paris as they could touch. Dozens of historical buildings were set ablaze, and these spread along the landmarks and districts of Paris. The last vestiges of royalty have just disappeared. I wish that the same will happen to all the monuments of Paris. Bergeret, commune leader. The Palais de Justice, the Prefecture des Police, and other famous buildings were left in ruins. The library of the Louvre Museum also suffered, and the Louvre itself would have been lost if not for government soldiers intervening. The socialists stole and beheaded 28 stone statues in the Kings of Judah from Notre Dame. While the cathedral was also set on fire, Notre Dame survived the encounter thanks to people who helped distinguish the flames. The Palais Royal was also among the structures saved. And finally, the commune leaders torched their own headquarters on May 24th, setting ablaze the historic Hotel de Ville before their brutal reign was overthrown by incoming government forces. Although the Paris Commune of 1871 ended, the ideas hatched from France would later be deployed across the globe. This included in the United States with socialist and anarchist riots through the late 1800s that culminated in the 1920 bombing of Wall Street. Marx laid a curse on France with a pamphlet in 1871 stating that the civil war in France could have neither peace nor troops with these new factions and the old ones, and that the battle must break out again and again in ever-growing dimensions. And again and again, it did break out. The Paris Commune of 1871 was the first time communists took power but their appetite for destruction and bloodlust would continue under all its subsequent systems. Blue.